Welcome everyone. Welcome to Rise Community Church Online. My name is Pastor John and we hope to see you guys again soon and we of course wish you uh, happy holidays and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we just thank you uh, for being with us today. Lord, we just thank you for watching over us. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, we just pray that uh, as we hear this morning's uh, message and as we worship you, Lord, that you will speak to us and that you will uh, give us, uh, Lord, an encouragement and, and hope, Lord, and, and just a, a word for uh, continuing to grow closer to you. Lord, we just pray that we will uh, not lose focus on what's important this time of year, Lord, that you, you came and you came to, to save us and to give yourself for us, Lord. And we just pray that you will give us boldness to pass the gospel message on to others. Lord, we, we just love you so much and we thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Lord, we thank you for all the little ways that you take care of us and watch over us. And we ask all of that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And please now join us for a time of praise and worship.
by the sound of his voice and sees it all shaken and stirred can become and broken from body gone through it all through it all my eyes are open through it all through it all it is well Far be it for me to not believe, even when my eyes can see. And this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the mist of sea.
Good morning. Welcome to Rise Community Church Online. I'm Pastor Chopper, and now on to the announcements. This Christmas Eve, we are meeting at 6 p.m. at the Old Davy School on Griffin Road. Make sure you guys sign up and pre-register. You can go on to risecommunity.org to pre-register. It's very important that you do this because we're limited with the, how many people can come. So if you're not on that list and we have too many people showing up, unfortunately, you're going to get turned away. So make sure you sign up. Now, on today's message. Good morning and welcome to Rise Community Church Online. I'm Pastor Pete and we are happy that you're here. I hope you could have been with us last week. Uh, we had our live service at Calvary uh, Chapel Plantation and we had a great time and many of you were able to attend. I'd like to remind you guys that we will be having a Christmas Eve service uh, at the Old Davy Schoolhouse. So if you want more information on that, make sure you go to our website. Make sure you register because uh, they are limiting our capacity there. So uh, we'd love to see you again, another opportunity for us to gather. We're going to continue in our message, Peace on Earth. Uh, this is the second uh, message in the series as we prepare our hearts for Christmas and for the celebration of Jesus. Um, and last week I talked about uh, what, what does the Word of God teach us about peace? You know, there's a difference between the peace that the world offers and the peace that a God offers. And Jesus himself said that. Uh, but I want to remind you of the three verses that I shared. In John 16, 33, uh, this is what Jesus says. He says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So there's so much in that, in that simple verse as Jesus tells us, number one, that there's a, there, we find our peace in Him and that peace doesn't mean that we are not experiencing trials and sorrows. Uh, and He points out that He has overcome these things and that in Him we have this peace. And in John 14, 27, He says, I am leaving you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And peace... And the peace I give you is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So he makes a distinction between the peace that we think of. We think of peace as the absence of problems or in the case of the world, an absence of war. But, but, but Jesus talks about a different kind of peace, the peace that he offers, a real deep spiritual peace that can only come from God. And he says that he's offering it to us as a gift to have peace of mind and heart. And again, do not be troubled or afraid. He recognizes that. In Galatians 5, 22 through 23, uh, this is what Paul talks about. He says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. And I shared that verse to show you that peace is something that we experience only with God, but it's also a product of the Holy Spirit in us. And it's a product of our growth spiritually as we grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, as we grow in Him and are rooted in Him. That is where peace exists. And we talked about how elusive peace can be and how the world is so deeply rooted in negativity and in, a, in just a negative perspective. But, but the, the peace that God talks to us about is a peace that's not in our circumstances, a peace that is not in our possessions, and a peace that is not even in our success. And the biggest enemy to all that is uh, just that negative thinking and the negative view that we experience. I talk about how, how we're almost, our society has wired us 
to be critical, has wired us to be negative towards, uh, towards things. And, but, but I talked about how even though it's so common, it's almost instinctive for us to be negative, how crippling that is, that kind of thinking and what it produces in our lives, that it's life crippling, that it's a dream crippling, and that it's hope crippling. You know, maybe you're in that situation right now that our circumstances are so much that we are being crushed by the just the thought of 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 what is happening and and what's and what you're struggling with. And God wants to intervene there. He wants to. Uh, it, this is a a, a a big part of what Jesus talks to us about throughout the New Testament about what life with him offers it's 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 a peace that the world cannot give us and it's a peace in the midst and beyond the scope of our circumstances and our trials and our sorrows you know we we covered last week uh uh numbers chapter 13 and 14 and i i kind of put that as the example of the illustration of how just negative thought and, and negative communication with one another is so damaging. How destructive the power of negativity. Uh, just to remind you of the story, Moses and the Israelites have been traveling for many years uh, in the desert. They've already been uh, uh, rescued from Egypt. And now they're uh, about to arrive at, to Canaan. They're on the borders of the promised land. And as, as, as they get there, Moses sends out 12 Men, 12 spies to go and look and see like a reconnaissance. And, uh, and for 40 days they're out there and then the spies return. And they were all unanimous in the fact that this was a beautiful land, that it was rich and fertile and it was flowing, it's described with milk and honey, just as God had promised them. But the bulk of them then continued and said, but there's giants in the land. There, there, there's enemies, and they start naming the enemies left or right. And 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 it, they only two, only two of those uh, folks there didn't see it that way. You know, Caleb and Joshua, they believed that God had told them and that they could conquer the land as God had promised them. And even though God has shown Himself faithful for 40 years in the desert. And has, you know, you know, we're talking the Red Sea, we're talking, you know, the plagues of Egypt, we're talking uh, water and manna in the desert, we're talking every opportunity God has proven himself. They fix in their minds that this is a place where they cannot win. We talked about how that negativity then went through the camp and they began to weep and fearful. Now, understand that they're not even experiencing any of that. It was just the conversation. It was just a thought. They, you know, they start passing the message along with this gossip uh, through, 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 the, through the tribe. And, and, and it just, it, they begin to weep. It's like, this is like almost like a death sentence. So the promised land becomes like a death sentence to them. You know, and, and, and I said, before we look too badly on, on the Israelites, you know, Understand that they had a lot of hurt, a lot of damage. They were slaves and they were, they were abused. And, 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 and we don't, you know, the stuff doesn't just get, we just don't get rid of that stuff and forget it. We have to deal with that stuff. God wants to deal with those hurts and the, that damage and that, uh, the, those things that, we've, that, that have caused us to, to have this negative view. And I shared my own struggles, how that's like the, that's the ultimate battleground for me is my own thoughts. You know, my own thoughts of, 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 be, of, of not being able to accomplish the things that God has called me or not being good enough or not being smart enough or, or you fill in the blank. We all have those. But with these deep wounds, you know, the betrayals of the past, our failures, our losses, they continue to keep us sometimes in emotional and mental slavery, just, just like the Israelites. I told a story about the elephant trainer and how they want, people wondered how a, this gigantic animal can be uh, tied down with just one little spike. But the trainer explained that spike was there since they were little when they couldn't pull it out. And they had just given up. 
So even though they had the ability at any time to pull and to be free, that memory of failure, that, that memory of never being able to escape was ingrained in them. And we have many of those mental stakes driven down in our own life. Years later, here we are as adults, and those stakes are still holding some of us fast. And why, why do I say, well, what does that have to do with, you know, God has saved me and I've, I've come to believe in Jesus? Well, the, the reality is, as I said at the beginning, there, there is a, uh, a necessity for us to grow closer to Christ, to grow in the knowledge of Christ, to grow and allow the Spirit to produce this fruit in us. And part of that process is God revealing these wounds and these hurts so that He can address them. And He can help us and bring healing. We shared last week that negativity distorts the truth about yourself. And that's what we've been talking about. That negative thought. When you look in that mirror, that voice, the voice that tells you that you're not good enough, or you know, it's amazing how 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 in the middle of of, a, of of out of nowhere we can be reminded of a great failure that we experienced, or somehow that we've fallen short, and it happens to us, right? But but to them, it happened that it distorted their view. They didn't see themselves as the children of God. They didn't see themselves as more more than conquerors, right? They didn't see themselves that way. They said they, they described themselves as grasshoppers amongst the giants. But that wasn't the truth. That wasn't the truth. That was their perception. And then they wanted, basically, they allowed themselves to believe that those lies about themselves. So negativity distorts the truth about ourselves. But the biblical cure is to see ourselves differently, to see ourselves as God sees us, to see ourselves through the Word of God. And that is part of renewing our mind. And, and it's something that we have to uh, engage with God in to learn more of His Word so that we can understand what is true and what is not true. You know, so we have to see ourselves differently. Caleb and Joshua, they saw themselves differently. These are the same guys that were part of that 40 uh, the, the 40 days out there with the 12 spies and, and they didn't see it that way. They saw themselves as, no, we can do this. God has promised this land to us. So they allowed God and His truth to reveal who they were in Him. And they weren't fearful and they were able to go forward. We're gonna, today we're going to continue. That's our, just our introduction, but Another reality is that negativity distorts the truth about other people. When we allow negativity to dominate our thinking, it distorts the way we see our husbands, the way we see our wives, the way we see our children, the way we see our friends, the way we see the church, the way we see the community. Negativity doesn't only distort our view of ourselves, but it distorts the view of others. Our relationships are affected by negativity. Let's talk about that for a moment. You know, these are sometimes the things that we struggle with. We feel that we're not a part of something. Uh, many times I'll hear that uh, in, in, in the church that's a community. They'll say, I don't feel that I'm part of the church. I don't feel I'm in. I don't know what's going on. Or, or I feel like I'm an outsider. And I tell them that is not the truth. That is the perception that, that, is, that you're feeding and we've all felt that. We've all felt that we're outside. We're outsiders. But in the kingdom of God, we are insiders, not outsiders. There are no outsiders. And specifically in the body of Christ, we're called to be uh, part of the body. And, and, and my challenge to you is to challenge that thinking, to challenge that distortion. I, I'm not saying that you don't feel it for real. I, I, I know. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I've experienced those feelings also. Or maybe you're experiencing that with your husband or your wife where things are, are difficult and tough and, and you begin to think that they don't love you anymore or that they don't care about you anymore. But it could be the furthest thing from the truth. But we're allowing that negativity to distort our view of our relationships. But it distorted the Israelites to the point 
that in Numbers 14, verse 4, they say that they plotted amongst themselves and they said, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Guys, that is just insane. They want to go back to slavery. They want to go back to their abusers. Because they, have, they don't trust Moses. So it's distorted their view of their God-given leader. The one who's fought for them and walked and led them and prayed for them and interceded for them in every way. You know, and Caleb and Joshua give this rousing speech that God is with us and that we're going to have victory. And the response, well, let's look at verse 10. It says, but the whole community began to talk about stoning Joshua and Caleb. So the two folks that are on target with God, the, the two who are hearing from God and are trusting in God and are not negative are being threatened with their lives. Has that ever happened to you? Speaking truth is a dangerous thing in this world. To be an encourager sometimes can be a dangerous thing. But this negativity has distorted their view of who's on their side, who is for them. And that's exactly what negativity will do. The, 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 people, are, you know, the people that we can be trying to help, the people that, uh, that we're trying to speak truth into our life, the people that are challenging us, out of our negativity, sometimes can, can, they become enemies because we, we allow that negativity to cloud the truth. You know, part of my calling as a shepherd is to confront and correct in love and, to tell, and to sometimes to warn and say this is a destructive path. And I, I, I wish I'm always received as a friend or someone who's trying to bring uh, light and love, but uh, you know, I've often been killed as the messenger. You've heard that old saying, you know, kill the messenger. I've seen it happen again and again. When we are going through a difficult time, negativity can creep in. And we can leave, uh, you know, we, can, we tend to isolate ourselves, right? We, we leave our church family or we, we leave our, we, we stop connecting with our husbands or with our wives. You know, we start complaining about those people in our lives. And then when someone comes to confront us in love, sometimes we even attack them for telling us the truth. But what's the cure? The cure, the biblical cure, is to see others differently, to see them also how God sees them. You know, negativity will end up choosing your friends for you if you like it. If you stay in that negative mindset, you will find people that are complaining with you, that are agreeing with you, that are cons conspiring with you. You'll find people to do that with you. But those aren't the people you need to look for. You need to look for the godly people in your life, the spiritually led people in your life that can speak truth to you whether you like what you're hearing or not. You need to find people who have, who have the, the, the right spirit. You need to surround yourself with Joshua's and with Caleb's. Uh, and, and just like that, the reality is there's, there's a lot less uh, uh, out there. <laughs> the Joshua's and Caleb's are a lot less than the, those that are negative. People are going to speak truth into your life. That's what you need. God's people to speak truth into your life. People that are going to encourage you. People that are not going to discourage you and kick you when you're down. People that will help you to become closer to God. That's why a community of believers is so important for us. And, and now COVID is showing that clearly as I talked to, to, to friends and pastors throughout the community, through other states. I just talked to one of my friends yesterday and catching up. And, 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 and the church, church folks, because of COVID, understandably, have not been able to gather. But that doesn't mean that we cannot connect, that we cannot stay together in the midst of this difficult time. And as soon as we can meet, we need to gather again. Meeting is important. 
Hebrews 10, 25, it tells us, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the days approaching. You see, there's a, the, you know, church is not Sunday. You know that. We, we've talked about that together as, as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are the church. And we don't do it alone. We're not in isolation. We can't be. It doesn't work that way. God designed us to be a body that serves each other as we serve the Lord. And it's the place where we, are, we can be encouraged and supported in our difficult times. We need to surround ourselves with people who speak the truth. And we have to be people that challenge people with when they're negative and their lies. We need to be able to tell folks, you're not seeing it right. So it's not just receiving God's truth. It's also challenging the negativity and challenging folks that are not thinking clearly. That's part of our role as brothers and sisters in Christ. So what kind of type of person do we need to be? Do we need to be a Caleb or we can be that, like that crowd? I mean, we, we, we choose. Proverbs 10, 11, it says, The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. You know, the words of the godly in my life have been life-giving. In difficult moments, people that I know that speak life into me. And I pray that you have those people in your life that you're not so isolated and, and so disconnected that you have no one to speak life into you. Our mouth has a direct connection to our heart. Jesus talks about that. I've talked about it many, many times. I tell my kids all the time. Matthew 15, 18, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. You know, a lot of times people are concerned or, 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 or critical of the way people look. Or, or, or the words that they might use, or, 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 or you name it. Here, Jesus is talking about uh, the Pharisees were all complaining because they weren't following the rules, the rituals, the habits. And Jesus said, listen, it isn't, it isn't what goes into your mouth. What comes out of your mouth is what reveals who you are. So let's not get caught up in the habits and the looks, but let's, let's pay attention to what comes out of people's mouths. A, people, a, a person's mouth, because that will reveal the condition of their heart. So what are you speaking into people's lives? What am I speaking into people's lives? Are we a fountain of life? Or are we a sewer of negativity and death? Are we choosing to speak into people's lives? Or are we helping someone down a dark path? Are we feeding that negativity. You know, we can be, you know, we become contaminated. This is what happened with this group. I mean, they were contaminated by, by, by the 10 who came and began to spread gossip. How many times have we seen that in this world? How many times have we seen this in the church? We have to surround ourselves with Caleb's and Joshua's, but we also have to hold each other accountable. We have to be Caleb's and Joshua's too. You know, and where are you going to find these people? I pray you find them here. I pray you find them in the women's ministry. I pray you find them in the men's ministry. I pray you find them in the community, in the children's ministry, uh, in the community groups, in, the, in all the things that happen. I, I pray that all of us as the body of Christ at Rise Community Church, that we are Joshua's and Caleb's and we are encouraging. Speaking truth. And I, and I don't want to give a false impression. It, not everyone you find in a church or is going to be a fountain of positivity, but that's our goal. To be Christ-centered. We can find others to speak life into us. And I pray like if, you, if you're out there right now and you're really struggling with a decision and, and you have kind of gotten stuck in this negative wave, that you seek out your brothers and sisters, to encourage you. 
the ones that are the Joshua's and the Caleb's that are going to challenge you. They're going to speak into your life and say, I'll pray with you. The bottom line is we need to see ourselves differently through the lens of the, the Word of God, the Word of God and the true people of God. We need to see others differently. And that means trusting some people, God's people, to speak truth to us. And then we can begin to speak truth to others. But you know, negativity distorts more than just our views of ourselves and of others. It also distorts our truth about God. You know, negativity distorts our view of God. I was talking with someone uh, for, you know, growing up, we, we, have, we, we received a distorted view of God. I did. I mean, gosh, my parents would, you know, my mom would say, you know, Papa Dios te va, te va a coger. You know, Daddy God's going to get you. So as a child, uh, you know, the, 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 the distortion of God was that God was out to get me. That he was out to get me. Like if I waiting for me to do something wrong so he can he can bring the hammer down. That's a horrible description of God. And an unbiblical description of God. But how many of us have experienced that? How many of us, our earliest memories are 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 are, are embedded with this lack of truth that God is far from us and he's removed and he doesn't love us. When we open up the word of God and everything is about God so loving the world that God, his desire is to rescue all of humanity, that God has given his only son, that God has sacrificed for us, that while we were still enemies, he loved us. That's not the message I got. Sometimes even from church. Numbers 14, 13, this is, this is their negativity that distorted the truth about God. It says, why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Man, that's a distortion. They've forgotten who God is. They've forgotten that God rescued them his love for his people, that he, had, he was doing something special with them. See, the people of Israel at that point thought that God was against them. That negativity poisoned, poisoned them. And maybe you're here today and you're struggling with a medical condition or struggling with a financial problem or struggling with, with, with your marriage. And the thought has crept into your head that God doesn't care. We sometimes make that wrong correlation that because difficult times, trials and, and tribulations come, that God does not love us. And that's not what the Word of God teaches us. And we need to ground ourselves in the truth of the Word of God. Trials and tribulations come to all people. James chapter 1, look at it. Some trials we bring upon ourselves, but most trials we experience are just trials and tribulations that every single human being experiences. And no, God is not out to get us. And no, God is not bringing punishment on us. You know, and, and the Word of God is clear in that. One of the things that broke my heart when my sister was very ill and she was uh, close to dying. Some believers told her the reason why God has not healed you is because you have some secret sin that you haven't confessed. And some people have that theology. I'm going to tell you, that is not biblical. That is what Job's friends told Job. And God said that that was not the case. Job's friends tried to explain Job's problems because he was a sinner. And it wasn't because of that. And the things that we're experiencing, some things, yes, are a result of our choices. But it's not a punishment from God. It's consequences 
for the choices we make that we bring upon ourselves. There's a difference. Do you think that God is out to get you? Do you think that God is not on your side? That is the deepest negative place to be. And we need a cure. And the cure is also to see God differently, to see God through Scripture, to see God as we know Him in our relationship with Him. We need to see God correctly. Caleb and Joshua got this. They knew that God was on their side, that He had already made promises to them. And they held fast to God. Numbers 14, 9. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection. But the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. Understand their perspective. They're saying, God has already said this. Believe the truth. Twelve men shared the same experience, but two completely different perspectives, two completely different assumptions, and two completely different lives lived as a result. My question for all of us is, do we need to challenge our view of God today? God is not out to get you. God is not out to punish you. He's out to save you, to rescue you, to bless you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to help you, to strengthen you right now. That's the truth. I'm not making it up. It's in the Word of God. You can go and begin to study the Word of God and know and understand. So when people tell you a different thing about God, you can say that is not the truth. God is not out to get me. He's out to save me. He's out to rescue me. He's out to have a relationship with me. That is the heart of God that is revealed in His Word. The other ten sabotaged their lives as well as the lives of the Israelites. What do I mean? You see, because another symptom of that negativity is that will sabotage your life. Negativity sabotages your life. It sabotages your present moment and it will sabotage your future unless you turn from it. It will sap the hope from your heart. It will destroy the meaningful relationships in your life. You will miss out on what God has for you. As I said before, do you know that all the Israelites who allowed this negativity of the 10 spies to take hold of their lives, in other words, the whole group that became negative, all of them, except for Caleb and Joshua, all of them, that entire generation, never entered the promised land. Did God do that to them? No, it was a consequence. Their refusal to see the truth. And it sabotaged their relationship with God. It sabotaged the future that God had for them in the promised land. Don't miss it. Because of their negativity, their negativity sabotaged them. Their negativity sabotaged a whole generation They could have experienced the blessings of the land flowing with milk and honey. Instead, they experienced the desert until their death. Why? Because negativity will sabotage our future. And negativity will do that to us. It will sabotage God's plan for you your life now and in the future. And your life will not be all that it can be if we allow this negativity to dominate who we are. And the cure is, is to walk in the truth of God. We need to understand God's plan for us. Joshua and Caleb understood. Joshua and Caleb trusted in the words and the promises of God, do we? Joshua and Caleb understood that God was for them and not against them. Joshua and Caleb knew all the things that were working for good in their lives. Not that everything was good, but it was working towards good. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. Even the bad stuff, God turns to good. He makes everything beautiful in its season and in its time. 
Have you experienced that truth? I have. My hurts, my abuses. God has turned those things that would have destroyed me. He set me free. And now he comforted me so that I can comfort others in those things. Guys, today, right now, in this season of craziness, that's negative, that's all you get is negativity. We make a decision to not allow that negativity to rule our lives. I'm not telling you we never are going to have negative thoughts. I'm not telling you the power of positive thinking. No, I'm talking about the power of true thinking, of the renewing of the mind by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. That's what I'm talking about. Overcoming that negativity with the truth and with the Spirit of God. To take hold of the truth of God. To take hold of it, the Word of God. To let it renew us in a real way. To let it challenge us and change us so that we can understand and see ourselves differently. So we can see ourselves as God sees us to begin to see other people differently as God sees them, to surround ourselves with Joshua's and Caleb's and to begin to see God differently. He is with us. And this is a real challenge for us. But everything's at stake. Because if we just allow that negativity to just grow and grow and grow, it will sabotage our future. You have to make a decision whose side we're going to be on. Those that are building up or the ones tearing down. Those that have a vision from God for the future or those that have no vision at all. And there is a serious upside to being a Joshua and a Joshua and a Caleb. You experience the blessings of that promises, the promised land. Do we see the lessons here? Negativity affects everything in your life, but not only in your life. Negativity spreads from you, from us. It poisons those around us, just like those 10 spies poisoned all of Israel. Negativity will keep us from accomplishing what God wants for them, what people want, what your children want, what your spouse needs to hear from you. You want your spouse to know God? Encourage. Intervene. Intercede. Negativity and negative talk will keep us from accomplishing all that God has for us. I've experienced negativity throughout my whole life in churches. I've seen it split churches. I see it derail ministries. I see it actually hinder the worship. It has stopped God's people from accomplishing all that God had for them in that moment. And yes, it's difficult. And yes, when we choose to be positive and to be focused on the truth and the word of God or the renewing of your mind, guess what? We will be a minority. But what's the reward? The reward is knowing the Lord. We can choose to be the encouragers or the discouragers, to see the past and see the problems and move past them. But it has to be a conscious decision for each of us every day. There's been times in my life where the negativity was so thick where I found myself going, I had to find myself just sinking into this negative thought, negative talk, and I had to make a conscious decision to physically stop. I needed to tell myself to shut up. Have you been in one of those situations? I was in a situation for a couple of years, and, and, and I, I found myself getting negative to the point that I, 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 I took a piece of rope and wrapped it around my, my hand so that I would be reminded to change my thinking. 
that when my thoughts would turn negative, I would look and be challenged. Psalms 42, 5 and 6. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. David is saying to negativity, shut up. I'm going to look to God. I'm not going to get stuck here. I'm going to put my hope in him. Some of us need to make that decision right now because we're allowing uh, uh, the negativity to win the day. You got to cry out to God. If you're in that place, tie a rope around your arm. Remind yourself every day about who you are in God. Challenge yourself every day to be to be to be to be renewed in your thinking and in your spirit by God, and it's it'll make the difference in your spiritual growth. So again, I challenge you. What will, what will we choose? It's not easy to remain positive. I know. It's not easy. We're facing difficult situations and financial reversals and health issues and marital troubles and conflicts and losses in so many areas. But the, but the cure is to see ourselves differently and to see others differently and to see God differently, to allow the truth of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And that's my challenge to each of us today. As we try to cross into that promised land and to understand and receive the peace that God promises us. And we have a part to play. To push deeper. To grow. In our understanding of the word and our relationship with God. Love you guys. If you have any questions or if you want to talk about these things, please reach out to me or reach out to the church. We're here for you to the best of our ability to be Joshua's and Caleb's. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity that you have given us today to hear your word, to grow, and to respond. And that's what I pray for my brothers and sisters today, that we would just not have heard a message another sermon to forget, but that instead, Lord, we will have heard your spirit. It will stir us. It will change us. It will take root in us, your word, and we will be transformed into the people that you've called us to be. I pray for those that are struggling with negativity. I pray for those that are struggling right now with decisions that uh, can sabotage their lives. I pray that they will turn to you and that they will seek you above all. Love you, Lord. Have mercy and grace upon us. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you next week.